Hello everyone and welcome to the New Look Spurverse, the show where we discuss everything Spurs from the week just gone. I'm here with Craig and Emma as usual. This week we've got a lot to get through. We're talking about the Dortmund team selection, the Villa performance, Kane's golden boot campaign, Lloris's potential poor form of late, Gomez slamming Arsenal and Vertonghen back in training. But Emma, you were at the Dortmund game. That seems like the most important thing to kick us off. What did you make of that? Oh, it's a bit of a shame to kick off on like a bad note, but hey, I mean, let's face it, it, it we didn't cover ourselves in glory, let's be honest. No and it is down to the team selection. Now, everybody knows what a massive Pochettino fan I am, how, what we all are. Yeah. But the team selection to play one of the strongest sides in Europe in a competition that we could have had a realistic chance of doing well in was just a shambles. And I against mean, a full strength Dortmund team. I mean, that is the thing. Like, And they, I mean, they've got, a, even if they weren't full strength, they've got a quality squad yeah. Dortmund. Yeah. It's a tough, tough opposition. They, they really are a Champions League quality side. To, I mean, I know we had a couple of injury problems. You know, Dyer was supposedly rested with, yeah. with Ali suspended. I couldn't understand. Didn't even go. But to not start Lamella, to not start Dembele, like players that would have real fight and, and bite yeah. about Europa them. League superstar Lamella. Yes. How Indeed. much have you got six, seven goals a season in the It's in, insane. In the Why would you not start Lamella? Especially given that, like, I get that Lamella is important for the Premiership, but it's, I mean, you want to start Lamella and Son, because yeah. Son's got history against Dortmund, yeah. and Lamella's quality in the Europa League, right? But you can rest Lamella in a Premier League game against Villa. I just couldn't understand it. You know, Pochettino has taken this competition so seriously from the, get from the get go. We played so well against Fiorentina over two legs, played a really strong team. What was the point in doing that yeah. if we were then going to go to an even bigger club at an even bigger ground just goes and just throw it away? Everything he's been doing throughout the season. Completely. I mean, and you know, on Spurverts and here at Spurred On, I've been screaming for Onoma to get more of a chance. And I meant in like the FA Cup or League <laughs> Cup games. And then he goes and, you know, Dortmund. puts the 18 year old against Dortmund away. And he like, wasn't. Uh, why? He was, I think, headless chicken. He was struggling in the game. Yeah, he was, was running kind around. kind of the phrase he? that I would coin. I mean, it was very. It felt very disrespectful, not only to the competition, it felt quite disrespectful to the fans as well. You know, there were thousands of us out there who'd all paid a hefty wedge. There were also hundreds of us who, I'm sure lots of you guys, got caught up in the trouble that we had outside the ground before kickoff. Many of us missing the game because the police went a bit mad and crushed us all outside the gates. Um, to go through all of that and then to get onto, finally get into the ground and watch your team just capitulate against a much, much better side because we didn't take it seriously enough. It's, it's quite hard to take. possession in that game. Yeah. Completely. And, you know, possession it's, side, Tottenham. We spoke to a lot of Dortmund fans afterwards, you know, very friendly, we had a great time with the German fans. And a lot of them were just saying, we don't understand how you were so bad because they've seen us play in the Premier League this season. They've seen some of the damage that we can do. They were expecting a much tougher test. And I kind of countered back and said, well, that it, you know, wasn't really our first 11 selection. And they sort of look at me like, well, why wasn't it your first 11 selection? And I have was, to be it, honest, it, I agree with them. It was embarrassing, to be honest. I mean, a lot of people pegged it as a big game. You know, we're yeah. second in our league, they're second in the Bundesliga, both on 55 points at the time. It was supposed to be a battle of kind of the two second place teams, and, and it just. But also, when, it just when, didn't when, the, deliver. when the fixture was announced, Everyone was everyone buzzing, was so even the players yeah. though, and everyone was saying, "Oh, that's great! We yeah. want to play a team like Dortmund. Exactly. We don't, you don't want like Real an test. easy ride. You want a test. Yeah, you want a test. So Someone... then, why would you rest players against I Dortmund? Don't know. I mean, it's like a I mean, big... we don't know how that would have been a good, you know, indicator for how equipped we are for the Champions League next yeah. season. Exactly. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And he, and Poch just, I just thought, to be honest, I hate to use this word, but I just thought it was disgraceful. <laughs> I literally it's, thought it was okay. disgraceful. On the other side, is there a case for saying, you know what, it did pay off against Villa, and? Is it exciting no. Poch is going, I'm focusing on the league? No. Because it does it show that Poch believes we can win it? No. No, 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 no. Uh -oh. Okay? <laughs> because as I said in my match preview, we could have played Harry Winks and Tom Carroll at centre half and still beat Aston Villa. But we only won 2 0. It don't matter. We squandered like seven chances. So everyone at the back did their job. It was up front. The people up front didn't do their job. And yes, I'm speaking to you, Harry Kane, even though you grabbed a brace. No. Okay? You missed a bunch of chances. A lot of players, Lamella hit the post. I mean, we, we, we should have battered Aston Villa really I'm and impressed. truly. They're poor. I'm impressed with the we word squandered. Put, squandered is good, isn't it? We, we could have, we could have, we could have filled it, uh, filled it, um, that second string that team against Aston Villa and, you know, beat them. But instead. Yeah, well, we but, but is, it not, is it not exciting that Poch is clearly focusing on the league now as a result of that, right? It shows that he's focused on the league. Is it not exciting that for the first time, Poch having spent all season going, oh, you know, it's, you know, we just take every game as it comes. He's kind of now no, going, it's we can relevant win this. to the games we're playing. So if you've got Aston Villa on the weekend, you shouldn't be making those changes. It's yeah. not flipping Watford away. It's not West Ham away. It's Aston Villa. 
We'll Aston come, Villa. We will come on to the Villa performance in a moment, but I have to admit, I do totally agree. And this is not saying, I'm not calling out Poch, like saying, oh my God, he's terrible. Mm. It's not that. But I can sit here and say that I think he's a brilliant manager. I think what he's done this season has been great. But I feel really let down by what happened against Dortmund. And no one was saying we were going to go to uh, Signal at Duna Park and win. Nobody was saying that. They're a phenomenal side at home. But... To have brought them back to White Hart Lane and still be in the tie. To have lost 2-1 or get even 3-1. Get an away goal and see what you can do when you come back. It's such a shame after such a great campaign that this is how it's going to end. And I do hold Pochettino responsible for that because of the team selection you that we've You cannot had. be playing the such a lightweight centre midfield. No. My God, like no. That. No. Cool. Absolutely not. I mean... But we can link that now. Like you said, on the flip side, it did pay off against Villa per se. You know, move mm -hmm. on. You know, the second thing I want to talk about is the Villa performance. Um, we did look revitalised. We did look busy. The first half in particular was, you know, great to show. Um, we did miss a lot of chances, which was frustrating. Guzan yeah. made a couple of cracking saves, also frustrating and so typical. Why is it every goalkeeper seems to have a blinder against us? Um, but... It doesn't change the fact Aston Villa are terrible. There were moments that they made us look like Barcelona, like genuinely with the way that we were one touch past football around. That's not really how the Premier League ever works, to be honest. No team is that far streets ahead. And yet that's how poor this Villa side are. I mean, I feel for the Villa fans. You know, I know that our fans gave them a lot of support up there uh, with the learner out chance and the protests and stuff. You know, they're going through mm. a really bad time for a club that big and with that much history. That's Whenever a really terrible club. thing to see. Yeah. yeah. but It's a shame, but it's, but also... Is there is there something to say that we did we get a bit tired and switch off towards the end? I, I mean, they had we, some amazing chances to. We yeah. took our we, we definitely took our foot off the gas. I don't think we got tired. I, I think, think we exactly we consciously it. took our foot off the gas and thought there's no real contest here. Professional we can performance, all around. job done. We don't need to do anything. But, but is then that professional? The bar. But is that, but then the thing is, is that professional taking yeah. your foot off the gas? Because Barcelona won six 0 and I'm aware we're not you know we're not Barcelona. <laughs> Second time but, you mentioned but there's something you can learn from. We've Barcelona. already got the best goal difference, mate. When you've got the chance to go for the jugular and completely kill a team, just just do it. 3-0, done, then you can straight away. At 3-0, it's, it's beyond doubt. Well, for me as you well... You just correcting your match prediction, right? <laughs> <laughs> for me as well, I feel like we did switch off in the last 15 minutes. We did get really complacent. And we were very lucky in some respects because Villa hit the bar and the post twice. If both of those and had gone in... both should have both should have been goals. It would have been 2-2. Two, two. We were nowhere then for that. Would, then where would we have been? I think so. I well, either way, I think it's marginal. Score. But, I, you know, I... <sighs> I felt like for that Dortmund selection that we played on Thursday to be vindicated and to be justified, we had to come out and we had to smash Villa. And I said before the game, I was like, 4 0, that's when I'll be satisfied with what we did against Dortmund. We didn't get a 4 0. I know it's professional. Mm. I know, like, we saw the game out. We didn't concede. That's all great. But I am concerned now. A little concerned. You kind of because... scraped through it. No, we didn't scrape. Not, yeah, but I mean, scrape, it, it, but if we think about the chances they had, it could have been 2-2. It could have been not And then Poch is, is on the, not on the chopping block, that's a bit. No, that's I a bit. That's know. a bit far-fetched. But I mean, he's then, you, you start to question him, like, well, you did this and now this is well, how I, I found. I just question the fact that we've effectively chucked away two cup competitions in recent weeks, in the FA Cup and the Europa League, to focus on the league, which is great. But that means if we're focusing on the league... We need to give it absolutely everything yeah. in every single game. And I felt against Villa, even though it was all comfortable, I kind of agree with Craig, like you go for the jugular. You don't let up on them just because they're rubbish. Well, look at City. Like, the thing about Villa is that they they are in a relegation battle. I mean, they pretty much are relegated, but they are going to start every game and be difficult to break down, right? And that is exactly what happened against City. City didn't score in the first half and they got in at nil-nil. Once they then concede... They are then screwed and they capitulate and we sh and then yeah. City go on and score four against them. It's, right? funny, it's funny. And Liverpool scored six against them. Whereas yeah. we, we just got a second it's straight away in the second half and but they were like, "All oh, right, job that. done." They, and we didn't, shouldn't have done they that. didn't set up for. They didn't set up two no, they before. They, they actually didn't. went for it because they're bottom. They have to get have wins to at home. It, yeah. So it kind of played in our hands in that respect because but they, they still they weren't back. they weren't as easy to play against. No, they weren't. They're up for it. They, they have be. to be up for it. You've got banners from their fans saying we want a performance, we demand yeah, a performance. Yeah, yeah. Do it for the badge on the front, not your name on the that back. That said, Kane did get a brace, got ah, two goals, yes. and since, and he's now level with Vardy. I so believe. we're moving seamlessly, oh, on. Oh, we moving seamlessly, moving seamlessly on. We are moving seamlessly on to the next topic. On. Kane has said that his competition with Vardy for the Golden Boot makes him feel alive, according to the Evening Standard. Yeah. Do we think Kane is going to win the Golden Boot? I think it's possible. Yeah. I think How many Vardy people are in the race? Right. How many people are in the race, do you think? Just Kane and Vardy? Or no, you can never write off Aguero. You can never write off Aguero. You can't never write, write off Aguero. Aguero. He could score Lukaku. four or five in one game and just be right yeah. at the top. Um, Lukaku's definitely up there, one of the best young talents in Europe up front, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think Kane is... 
he's going to win it. But purely because I think Vardy's dried up and also a lot of teams have caught into Leicester. They're sitting a bit deep. Yeah. His whole game works on counter-attacking, yeah, yeah, yeah. beating the last player, man, yeah. being pacey. When when that's not happening, he's not really in the... G- I mean, he does go wide and, and contribute, mm-hmm. but goals-wise... He's a good player, but yeah, in terms of scoring, he gets a lot of his goals. He's not as intelligent as Kane Leicester. Quick, quick burst of pace, yeah. I think it's, I think it's Kane's for the taking purely because of the variety of goals that he scores. Personally, I don't yeah. think it's Vardy that could take it off him. I think Aguero could take it off him yeah. if anyone's going to. Yeah. It's a similar sort of thing in the fact that he can score outside the box, inside the box, you know, strikes, headers, the whole, you know, he's a complete player in a way that I don't necessarily feel, Vardy's a great goal scorer, but I don't feel he's got the same all round nature to his game, mm. um, which I feel that Kane and Aguero have got. So for me personally, I think Kane can do it. And he was saying he was saying in this interview that he uh, would look forward to seeing Vardy at the Euros if they both got Oh, that'd be together. great. I mean, and you, that they haven't, he said he hasn't texted, he was asked to be texted him to say, oh, I'm caught up. And he said he hasn't, they're both yeah. professionals, obviously, obviously. but yeah. they would chat about it. With, well, it's when interesting now when you think about the fact that Wayne Rooney's still out injured. I know, sorry, this is not Spurs specifically, this is England, but Wayne Rooney's out injured. When yeah. he comes back, I mean, can you justify him kicking Definitely Kane not. or Vardy Definitely out of the not. team? You've got to take they both. Were. They're completely different players. I think they'd be great. Yeah. And, I know we're going off the boil a bit, but I honestly think the last... So I think Rooney, Kane and Vardy are definitely going. I think it comes down to either Welbeck or Sturridge, in my opinion. Well, well, well after uh, Welbeck's miss in the FA Cup on a Sunday, it ain't going to be him. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that's some good form from Kane. What about Hugo Lloris? Now, some Sky Sports pundits, Charlie Nicholas and Merce, have yeah. said that uh, us not being top of the league is... In part, in a big part, they've said, down to Larice's poor form, he's been letting us down. Now, I know that we've all discussed this before, kind of like his, his first touch when the ball's passed back to him has put us in dodgy positions against West Ham and I think Arsenal a couple of times. And did it happen against Villa at all? Uh, just like a dodgy <laughs> distribution as well, just like yeah, picking it out. It of, did, it did happen against Villa. There was a yeah. lot of dodgy distribution there against was. Villa. I mean, he was actually, it was even worse than it usually is, not it? He was just hoofing it out of play by accident, which was... Very strange. Is I mean, it because he had nothing to do and he was just sort of... Uh... Do you know what? Let me... Do you know what? I tried to stay calm, yeah? I tried to stay calm. Yeah, but do you know what? Do you know what, Lloris? When he's under pressure, he takes that second touch. The ball comes to him. He takes a second touch and then he tries to aim for someone and then he just kicks it out of play. He does it every single game. It is so annoying. When the ball comes to you, Lloris, if you're watching this, just boot it out. Then you can earn your cigarettes. But is that not a bit of an old school way of looking at... Football, just kick it out. I mean, but the, the, but do Barcelona if he, if he, just if he kick takes it out? The Real Madrid touch, just boot it out, or if, do they if take he that takes touch, that, find a man and go and listen? Win if he takes that extra touch and he's booting it out of play, then what's the point? You well, might as well just get rid of it because he puts himself under problem. pressure. I know. If, so he's often he, got a bad first touch, but if, then it's only his pace that because he runs like an outfield player. But it's, it's not even just the first touch. He takes too long to make a decision. Someone closes in on him, and there's been so many times he's like running away. Is it the outfield player's jobs then to be in a good enough position that he's actually got an option? But it's but it's not in a good position because it's even when he's taking goal kicks. I don't know what it is. It's like mm. he's got a blind spot when it comes to his kicking. I've been saying it all season. Even taking goal kicks, he very rarely finds one of our players. They have to go back and win it off the opposition, which they do most of the time. But that's... I don't. I can't possibly be too critical of, course, of Hugo. Either. He's phenomenal and he's saved our ass more times than I can count, not just this season, but in seasons gone by. No, he's amazing. But... There is some... I don't know what it is. It's like he's got a mental block when it comes to the kicking side of his game. And it is... I was worried against Villa on Sunday because he it happened a lot, which uh, even by his standard is unusual. And I'm a little bit concerned that there's no improvement in, in what's going on with that. If anything, it's getting worse. Yeah. And at one some point or another, that is going to cost us. Well, you go, know what? Go, going back to what Merce said quickly, though, I mean, obviously the kicking is, is, is a long-term issue. We've said the kicking thing. They haven't yeah. said the kicking thing. Oh, OK. Well, for, for, for me, this is so what, what I'm saying. So what are they calling poor form, then? Uh, Sanchez's goal. Yeah, like that. that's what I was going to say. That's, no, a no, that's a blip. That's a blip. That's a blip. That's but ridiculous. the kicking thing, like I said, it is kind of a long-term problem we've seen over this over the How years. How can they possibly but that's a call blip. it poor form when we've still got the best defence in the league? But, yeah, but, but, oh, no. but they're not lying. They, he, that save, or sorry, that save that he didn't make yeah. cost us being top. Or but what about the save up? he made to stop Otamendi equalising for City exactly. right at the end of the game? Is there not even out over the season? He, that, that shot that Sanchez scuffed, in he, my opinion, yeah, he, he got a hand to it and he should have saved that. And we wet. would have been soaking top wet, for at least five hours if he'd made that save. <laughs> but we, were top, we were top for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were top for ten minutes. Best ten what? minutes of my life. Go on, ten minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, what about another ex-Spurs goalkeeper, Gomez? Oh, oh. 
Yes. Yeah. What a legend. So you want to talk about this because you've been slamming Arsenal. Yeah, he was slamming Arsenal. He came out and he said that, you know, they're, they're not a big side. They lack the mentality. Um, and I just think it's amazing. I mean, he used to play for Spurs. I know he wears that stupid gum shield. But he got a bit excited after Watford beat them. You know, he's come out. He did, I think yeah, that yeah. bit of Spurs Love is still it. in him. That's the Love thing. It. When no, players come what? to our club, they he can never get rid of they it. They still love us. He, but he slagged he us off. He's, this time last year, or maybe even more recently than that, he slagged us off. He said that we we buy a player like Lamella and we make him terrible. And he was it was about a month before we became quality, he was saying, look at Spurs, they're terrible, they make good players rubbish, what a bunch of idiots. Yeah, but, Terrible management. Yeah, but he'll always have that hate for Arsenal in him. He'll always have that hate for Arsenal in him. And you've got to remember as well, Watford and Arsenal's training grounds are right next to each other. They are. They're like right there. So there's a bit, there's just a bit of hate other. there. Yeah, there's a bit of hate there. So Gomez, I respect you for what you're saying. Thanks, you're not lying. Gomez. Fair enough. We love I you. think he's just trying to get back. I think it's transparent what you're doing. But <laughs> fair enough, I understand. Okay. Uh, Tongan is back in training. Yes! yes. Good news. <laughs> Massive yep, he's news. He's tweeted that he's touched the ball and he's oh. excited he to be back on the that. training field. I mean, Jan. We need yeah, him. We do need. Do you know what? Do you know what? I, do, I don't want to say. Okay, I don't want to say we need him because Vimmer's put in a performance. I mean, that last ditch tackle against Ramsey oh. saved our bacon. But it would be Vimmer's nice to have options, wouldn't it? To have a yeah. time back and be able to play Vimmer, and and then you can go to a game like Dortmund and rest Toby or Jan yeah. if that was the situation. Yeah. Play Vimmer and be confident and not feel like ah, oh, this is you know. But we can't, we can't ignore the fact that even though Vimmer's coming in, he's done a very good job. We have conceded more goals than we did yeah. when Vertonghen was in there. Of course we have. He's got but, more mistakes in him, I but think. But I don't think it's even that he's got more mistakes in him as such. I think, you know, it's just the fact that Toby and Jan had formed a, a real partnership, a real understanding. Like, it, centre back, you know, central defending, sorry, I should say, is all about partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have consistency there, it's, it's no you know, fluke that the teams that do best in the league and the teams that go on to win championships are the ones that have steady centre back partnerships and that's what we had. Vimmer has done a great job, but he's never gonna have quite the same level of understanding with Toby as as Jan. Of course, they're from the same country. They hadn't, you know relationships are about trust. <laughs> because they hadn't had the chance to build that from the beginning of the season like Toby and Jan had. So, you know, we were always gonna concede more goals. The point is we haven't conceded many goals. I think Vimmer's been fantastic. I've been so impressed with him. Plus he favourited a spurred on tweet this year. Five goals in seven games is what well, it's pretty good, actually. It's not too bad. Good. Five and seven in the Premier League. Plus, it's, we're still on course for my prediction. What's Which your prediction? Is? Concede, you concede under 30. Concede under 32, and you'll win the league, and we're on 24 with eight games to go, so we could average <laughs> oh, a goal a game oh, to the end of the season. This is why I think Leicester won't win it. They've conceded 30 goals, but I will say they have shored up the back. They're saying about Leicester. I thought I we were going to talk shit. about Leicester. I thought I we were going to give your blood pressure no. rest. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, folks, Jan favourited a Spurred on tweet, so he, he is did. in Hi my Jan. good books. And Hi you can Jan, follow you. you can follow Spurred on, on Twitter <laughs> at Spurred on TV. A yep. Seamless plug. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Uh, let us know what you think of the new look Spurverse. Do you like it? Uh, please say please yes. Like it. Uh, let us know. We've, we've chatted about a lot of stuff. Let us know what you think. Are we being a bit harsh on Hugo? Is Kane going to win the Golden Boot? Should we have picked a better team against Dortmund? Who knows? You can let us know that in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you liked it, and we will. We'll see you next time. Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On and welcome to your Monday, regular Monday edition of 